May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> it's the eve of Resurrection Sunday. It's the preparatory liturgy for the high holy day when we and the rest of the world's Western Christian community celebrate the promise and possibility of the risen Christ triumphantly walking out of the grave and beginning a new ministry as the holy body of compassion, faith, and charity. A miraculous resurrection that will, with the advent of the Pentecost, come to be the essence of what we all claim to be when we claim to be the church. It's the genesis of a new way to be and the beginning of a life that is not limited to the mortality of our fears and our shared willingness to be essentially dead. Jesus leaves the tomb, steps back into the world of living reality, and starts to be what he is called to be, a real and present ministry in the flesh and blood body of a holy, faithful, and compassionate person. It's the claim of our faith, both historically and presently. When we accept it with honest and truthful integrity, it becomes our call to do and to faithfully be in our lives with the faith, hope, and charity that are the Holy Spirit of what it means to be the body of Christ in the resurrected community of faith. You and me are called to be truly alive despite the deadly capacity of a world that frequently doesn't want to be. And when we're buried and expected to be cooperatively dead, our faith compels us to be alive with a passion for compassionate ministry that even resurrects itself when necessary in order to do and be the holy person that we are gathered together as one body to faithfully live as and to joyfully share. It's been a deadly couple of years for the family of humanity. The pandemic has left us with a painful legacy and a vigilant fear of the possibility of its untimely resurgence. The loss and tragedy have been and continue to be felt by all of us who are part of our shared community. People have died, lost members of their personal families, and the whole of the world community has been sealed in a tomb of seclusion that is spiritually difficult and physically, socially, and psychologically unhealthy. We've been sequestered in a dark reality where our fragile mortality looms heavily and our relationships have suffered from the necessity that we be socially distant. We are due for a resurrection of life as it can be when we are healthy and socially and the opportunity to leave our tombs and be free has, by the grace of God, recently come to be a truly real and present and compassionately responsible possibility. But for you and me, there's a lot more to the story. Our call to be a resurrected community has a 2,000-year history with a promise that what we can be more than we could ever hope for or imagine. We accept the call to rise up and be God's holy people. 
And in a world that has only recently and sometimes reluctantly come to see the stewardship of each other as a health necessity, there is a great hope and holy gift and the opportunity to share with it that what it can be is actually so much more when it allows the holy compassion to resurrect its true humanity. Our world has changed as we've come to be careful with each other in our mortal fragility. Being aware of how we need to be with each other when contact is risky has given us a glimpse into how it is that we can be with each other when we choose to care and act accordingly. A pandemic doesn't have to be the final word in how we choose to live in community. But neither does poverty or hunger or war or bigotry. Hatred doesn't have to harden our hearts and greed, false pride, and apathy don't have to be the demons that determine how we're going to be as a people and a society. In a community, that's ready for resurrection. There's a vital call for you and me, and it's one that can set us all free to be more than what we have ever been or ever thought that we could be. That's the call of Christ's compassion. Fully live. Live it. And see the miracle of how the world can be. And then, then turn around and help somebody else who's still in the tomb to step outside and see that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, just waiting for us to unbury our hearts and souls faithfully. Be it. Be it. Rise up to life in the resurrected community of God's most holy love. Unmask your Christianity. Open your mouth and share the infection that can make the world alive and healthy. Share the promise and possibility of holy compassion. Resurrect the world to a new life. Body of Christ, given for you and me, joyfully give. It's what living the resurrection truly means for you and me. And when we faithfully do it, with gratitude, generosity. The light of Christ can shine for all the world to see and we can all begin the joyful journey to life as it's meant to be when we unbury the love of Christ and set it free. Rise up. Roll away the stone. Open In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.